Dumpling Days, Chapter 27, Lissy's Photos. Days were melting away. Dad had left, and now we had only 10 days left in Taiwan. Today, we were going to the photography studio so Lissy could choose her photos for the album. And tomorrow, I had to choose which paintings I wanted for the exhibit. Mom had said I had to use the teacher's chop because she didn't have time to get our chops carved. Later, she promised, I'll get your chops carved later. Maybe there wasn't any time because everyone was planning for grandma's birthday party. Aunt B had already chosen the restaurant for the party and Auntie Jin had sent out the invitations. Before we even arrived in Taiwan, an Uncle Flower Shogun, Julian and their father had been and were still practicing a secret, Uncle Flower had said. What has grandpa done for the party? I asked, ooh, good question. He's too busy to working to do anything for the party, Auntie Jen said, laughing. He's paying for it. Mom felt bad that everyone else had done so much work for the party already, so she said she would order the cakes. We can stop by the bakery on the way back from the photo studio, she said. Lissy was eager to see her photos. She tried to hide it, but I could tell by the way she tapped her foot on the subway. I was curious too. We were kind of taken aback when the woman and the photographer pushed Lissy in front of a computer but we quickly figured out what was going on. Lissy was supposed to click a little box on the screen if that was a photo she wanted in her album. We all peered at the monitor. Who's that? Kiki asked. Me, Lissy said, giving Kiki a don't be dumb look. No, it's not, Kiki said. They mixed your photos up with someone else. We've got the wrong set. No, we don't, Lissy said, sighing in annoyance. They're my pictures. I didn't blame Kiki for thinking they weren't Lissy's photos. The girl on screen had luminous eyes and glowing skin that looked as soft as, fre as freshly laundered bed sheets. Her hair was glossy and smooth like black embroidery floss and her pink lips formed a delicate doll face. The girl in the photo was glowing and plastic looking like an actress or a movie star. She did not look like Lissy. And even when I knew it was Lissy, it was still hard to believe. When I looked closely, I could see a small resemblance, the nose, the teeth, the way she held the fan, but it felt like we were looking at a stranger. I think they made you taller on the computer, I told her. I couldn't exactly tell what they did, but she sure looked different or something. Lissy didn't seem to be bothered. She swung her legs as she clicked and scrolled and asked us over and over again which picture we liked better. This one with the umbrella, she asked us, or the close-up in the rainbow room? I like them both, I said, which was true because I didn't like either of them. Hmm. Okay, both then, Lissy said happily. Mom, there's a little box I can click if I want a poster made. Can I get a poster made? A poster? I didn't know if I wanted to see a big size version of these photos, but mom said, okay, but only one. I shrugged. Soon, Kiki and I got bored of watching Lissy go through her pictures. We left her and mom at the computer and sat in a waiting area, flipping through magazines. They were all in Chinese, so I couldn't understand them. Look, Kiki said, stopping at a page. This is the same dress Lissy's wearing in her photos. It wasn't exactly the same dress, but it was close. But what was weird was how much the model in the magazine looked like Lissy did in her photos. I looked at Lissy at the computer squinting on the screen and her hair tangled at the ends and her dirty feet flip-flops. There was no way she looked like a movie star or a model in real life. But if I didn't know her, her photos might have made me think so. If they could make Lissy look like a hairspray model, they could make anyone look like one. I started to flip through the pages of the magazine again and realized they were all fake. All these fashion models were probably photographed like Lissy. Lots of makeup, fake eyes, and lighting computer changes. It was all a big lie. I went back over to Lissy. She was almost done. You know, you really don't look like those photos, I said to her. I know, said L Lissy said, but it's fun, like a story or a movie. You don't have to be mean about it. No, I said, I meant you don't look like those photos and it's good. I think you look better in real life. Oh, Lissy said. She didn't say anything else but a little pleased smile curved on her lips. I'd never really said nice things to Lissy before, but for some reason, I felt like this was important because it was true. 
And I didn't think she looked better in real life. Or I did think she looked better in real life. She didn't look like someone fake. In real life, she looked like Lissy. Someone who's sometimes nice, sometimes mean, but always my sister. Just being herself was much better looking than one of those models pretending to be in the magazine. But that meant Lissy kind of was a beautiful thought. Then I realized in surprise, her Chinese name was right about her. I would never have believed it. Hmm.